Welcome to the exhibition Graphic Designers Collectors at A2Z here in Berlin. I'm Anja Lutz, initiator of A2Z and also of this exhibition that looks at what graphic designers collect. What I've been really interested in this, with this exhibition is to kind of look behind the working process of graphic design. And I find that the collections, meaning the filter that individual graphic designers kind of put on the world, kind of what do they see, what catches their interest, actually says a lot about the way they think and their work. So I will take you on a little guided tour now, and just to give you a first introduction of what there is to see, but believe me, there is ever so much more to discover if you have a chance to come here and see for yourself. Let me start with this collection by Fraser Margaret, who's collecting books with holes and who is leafing through his entire collection on this video. This is the collection by Nico Cortelis from the Portland Stamp Company, and he's collecting poster stamps which are stamps that are not meant for postal services, but are stamps that were created for advertising purpose. Here you can see the collection of Henning Wagenbrett. He's collecting wooden figures. And these ones are by a particular Czech woodcarver called Václav Buric. Václav Buric. Na Kim, a graphic designer from South Korea who also previously exhibited at A to Z, is collecting stickers. And she's collecting the kind of stickers that you find, those ready-made stickers you find in hardware stores and in paper shops. And if you know her work, you kind of know how she's also using these kind of stickers in her design practice. I've inherited this collection of beer mats by my grandfather-in-law. And he's been collecting these kind of coasters or beer mats since the student years in the 30s and throughout the 60s. Even further up here, you see a collection by Bernard Stein, Markus Etienne and Anki Brandt. It's a collection of the soak of trays from Vasungen. They were called Vasunga trays in the GDR. And they've been fascinated by the fact that they are showing abstract decoration and thus seem to have escaped the formalism debate uh, about uh, uh, representation in the GDR. Sven Fergus collects postcards, but they're very particular postcards, and if you look at them closely, you can find out what the particularity is. He collects co postcards where accidentally a Porsche 911 is, can be seen. Barbara Dechand collects floaty pans. And they're the kind of pans where you have a liquid, and if you turn it, like you can do here in the exhibition and in the display, you see that some elements are moving. Oliver Klimpel collects academic slides, the ones that you could find in museum bookstores, and 
that were kind of very popular previous to mobile phones when people could just take their own pictures in the exhibitions as reference in a way for academic talks. And have these beautiful writings on and copyright marks on the edges of the slides. The Syrian Print Archive is an initiative by Kinder Hanum, Sali al Asafin, and Hala al Afsa. They are collecting printed matter from Syria and organize it and display it and publish it in an online archive. Patrick Thomas collects auto export cards. And at least here in Germany, if you have a car, you find them under your windscreen wipers, wipers almost every day. And they're little self-made, uh, uh, generic kind of designed, uh, vernacular designs by people who want to buy your car and offer their services. Pauline Clancy is collecting test prints from her silkscreen work, and she combines these leftover and, and, and kind of wrong mistakes in, and test prints and overprints and combines them in books. And I find this is a nice example to see how these collections also become, kind of enter a new format and become a new life. Sonja Knecht collects sentences, and these are sentences that she hears in the news, she overhears in the street, or she might read in newspapers. And there are interesting and often funny findings, such as, as this, this sentence saying, man kann seine Liebe nicht wie Ohrfeigen verteilen, meaning you cannot spread your love like a slap in the face. Shimon Stemplewski is collecting records, but the particularity about this collection of records is that he's been kind of collecting them merely for the cover design and not for the music. And uh, same goes for the tapes and CDs that he's showing here. And during the opening, you could hear him DJing from exactly all these records that in fact he had never bought for their music which was an interesting experience. Jason Grant from Inca Hoots is collecting errors and they're metal signs that he collected from all over the world and shipped all the way from Australia, kindly enough. And he says he's really interested in these normal arrows. He doesn't want those flashy Los Angeles arrows. He really wants those basic normal arrows. And for him, he likes them for being like, it's almost the basic form of graphic communication. It's a very clear symbol that everybody understands. Sarah de Bond collects publications of and about Beatrice Ward. She was a woman typographer, an absolute pioneer, one of the first women in typography. And she had worked for the, also for the Monotype Corporation. And her collection also includes an original letter from 1940s that Beatrice Ward wrote when she worked for the Monotype Corporation. Sarah Illenberger collects stones, and this is a beautiful collection from stones from Tuscany. And she loves them for the various kind of textures, structures, and kind of lines and drawings on them. And if you know her work, you know how she actually employs these 
findings she finds in nature, elements, leaves, stones, sticks, etc., and uses them in her illustrations and installations. Jens Müller and Katharina Susek have started a collection not too long ago about anything. In fact, it was during the COVID times, they said, they started a collection about graphics related to travels. So postcards, brochures, hotel leaflets, um, business cards, magazines, etc. And for this exhibition, they, they are um, lending us and displaying here there's their collection of Japanese luggage tags. Bernard Stein has a very amazing collection of words. And the particularity of these words are that each one of these words contains every single vowel but just once. So like in the word querformatik, which means landscape format in German, you have the U and the E and the O and the A and the I, but just once. Another word that also has every vowel just once is the name Miklaus Troxler, the Swiss graphic designer. And talking about Niklaus Troxler, I show you his own collection. Niklaus collects rubber stamps. And knowing his, if you know his work, you might know that he very often employs these stamps on his music posters, CDs, and other graphic works of his. Yuli Gudehus collects toilet paper. And he has a collection of more than 1,000 different kinds of toilet paper. He we only have a small, small kind of excerpt of her collection, but you can kind of get the idea of the amazing varieties of toilet papers around. Andrea Tinnes collects textures and structures that she finds in the street around torn down posters, maybe an old brick wall, and she abstracts them in um, bitmaps. And those kind of textures she also employs in her typographic posters. And she literally has been creating a li whole library, a personal design library, where she houses all these different textures and structures for her work. Rob Keller is collecting A's without crossbars. Wherever he finds them, he photographs them. And he warned us, he says, don't ever start. Because if you start looking out for A's without crossbars, you will see them everywhere, and it literally becomes an addiction. Peter Nencini collects color, all kinds of colors, and I've seen how he houses them in his studio in London in different drawers that are all kind of organized by color. And for this exhibition, he lent us his collection of sage, olive, and high visibility greens. Philippe de Longle collects orange wrappers. Those kind of very, very thin papers that are wrapped around certain oranges, oranges in a crate and that show the producer or the importer of these oranges.
Barbara Dechand collects Samsonite beauty cases from the 70s and the 80s. Here is her collection of the blue ones and she usually uses them nowadays to kind of house her tools and also some of her other collections. Isabel Negle collects sponges, kitchen sponges. And again, it is amazing to see all the colors and varieties of these sponges. And she also kind of has uh, published a book where she's showing all the different sponges of her collection. Sarah Kaman is collecting queer and feminist publications and fanzines. And when you come here to the exhibition, you're welcome to browse them. And there are some amazing finds and publications to look at. Marguerite Warzecher collects fake documents. And I'm kind of quite envious of this, this uh, collection. These are the, the um, fake documents that you find in wallets in department stores. And they show those really kind of bad reproductions of American Express cards or, or IDs or driver's licenses. And money also. Zettelwerk is a collection housed at Burg Giebichenstein in Halle that collects everyday graphics of all kinds. There might be wrappers or tickets or forms or flyers, anything. And what they have kind of lent us for this exhibition is their collection of vaccination certificates. So we feel very much up to date in this time that vaccination is such a topic. And you see here beautiful, historic, and more recent vaccination certificates. Ronnie Duquesne collects PEZ dispensers, these kind of little square suites. And there have been a lot of different dispensers created for it. For different cartoon characters and colors and even sizes. Mark van Wareningen has been traveling Eastern Europe and Russia in the 80s and the 90s, and he's been fascinated by the design of their packagings, and here's a lot of different cigarette packagings, and they're often very simple two-color graphics on rough paper. Lucienne Roberts has inherited more than 10,000 bank checks by her parents who had kept them for their bookkeeping. The ones that she selected here relate, the dates of these checks relate to specific events in her life or in history, or like this particular one here, which was dated 11 April. 1969, which was exactly 50 years before the opening of the very, very first exhibition here at A to Z by Andrea Tinnis. These are sugar bags from around the world, many, many, many different ones, by Anna Bergenbusch. And last but not least, this is our own collection that we started now with this exhibition, which is that we are collecting all the names of the visitors. So if you come and see the exhibition and spend some time browsing all the details and stories in the exhibition, please don't forget to put your name and stick it here on the wall. Thank you very much and we hope to see you here. Bye.